Uh, can we start? Can you hear me? Is that better? OK. Uh, so actually, I'm a little surprised uh, because this is the last one. Uh, there are some, still so many people attending this session. So hopefully, I can uh, talk something good and not uh, disappoint you guys. So uh, yeah, today I will talk, in general, I will talk about uh, uh, Swift and Step performance. So here's thing I will talk, I will do a very simple introduction to save the time. And first I will talk about Ceph, and the second I will talk about Swift, and uh, in the end I will give you a summary. So uh, I will not compare Swift and Ceph apple to apple. So uh, because I think the first reason is I think uh, today if we look at OpenStack, Ceph is uh, more famous for the uh, block service and the Swift is more famous for the, you know, object of service. So in general, I, I will focus, uh, you know, uh, in different angle, try to look at that. So uh, I'm from Shanghai. Uh, actually, I came from Intel. Uh, I work for Intel, and uh, uh, we have a team here uh, working on the, you know, cloud technology, and uh, we're starting to look at uh, uh, OpenStack performance uh, from uh, two years ago. Uh, this is my third conference. And uh, actually, I delivered uh, the other talk regarding to uh, benchmark called Cosbench in San Diego, San Diego uh, OpenStack conference. So uh, all the content here actually is uh, still working in progress. So there may be something wrong. And uh, we are glad if you give us a lot of comments. And I want to emphasize this actually is a teamwork because we produce a lot of work, uh, a lot of data, and do a, doing a lot of environment. And I also want to thank for you know, people from Ink Tank and the Swift Stack. They go uh, some, you know, we actually talk the, what you see here and uh, you know, ask their comments and give us some hints so we can do some adjustment and uh, you know, make the things reasonable. And I'm, I'm trying to, you know, blog in more details about this talk because I only have 40 minutes and we have so much data. So I cannot cover all these details. So I'm trying to blog in uh, stuff and uh, try to explain that. So if you like, you can go to the, there's a blog link and you can go to that to look for more details. Okay, let's look at the safe part. Uh, so here's our testing environment. So in general, we, we just uh, take the, we just measure the RDB mode, I mean the block level performance. So we have four story nodes. And uh, all the network is 10 GB, so we want to make sure there's uh, no network bottleneck. And uh, for each node, uh, we, actually we have uh, one processor, and we have 16 gig memory, and we have 10 uh, 1 TB SATA disk. It's connected with, uh, you know, uh, LSI uh, HBA, uh, with the uh, JBoard mode, and uh, uh, each, each disk is partitioned into one OSD. And we also have actually three SSD, play as a general, and uh, if you know a lot about Ceph, you know, Ceph have a, a special general design, so they can make all this right run faster and do the snapshot thing. So we, we have three SSD, uh, and uh, you know, just uh, connect to the, we have some on the host, we have some local SATA controller, so we just connect to the SID to there. So this is a software configuration. Uh, when we're doing all this testing, you know, we, we stick to uh, Ubuntu, and uh, we have the, uh, you know, uh, actually the methodology we test is uh, we have an OpenStack environment, so we're just uh, starting a lot of virtual machine. And on each virtual machine, we will test in the, uh, starting the uh, simple workload called FIO and doing different workload pattern. So, so here's a version uh, make you know that what's, uh, you know, set, uh, you know, all this kind of uh, kernel version because actually the performance really depends on the kernel version, depends on the uh, QML version, all these kind of different things. So on the other side, we just enable the Jumbo frame uh, to make sure we can do a better sequential I.O. We do several uh, XFS, we use XFS here. Uh, we try, previously we tried ButterFS, 
But some of our customers tell me, you know, we want to FS because it's, uh, it's more stable, so we just uh, try FS here. And we also do some uh, self-tuning uh, to make sure you can, we can get something better. So there are several ways you can test your self performance, right? You can just uh, uh, testing from the, uh, you know, directly from the host. Uh, you know, you can also testing uh, from inside the VM. Uh, so we, we try to understand, you know, uh, from, from the custom view, if people really want to use self, we think the most common user model is actually something like they want to use like the Amazon EBS. So they, they mount the volume uh, into their virtual machine and use the uh, inside the virtual machine, they starting all this uh, workload and uh, doing all this I.O. So here we actually use RD mode and we actually go through the Cumul RDB. And uh, the workload actually we try, uh, we use FIO and we try four different workload Python. That's, uh, you know, uh, sequential read write with, uh, you know, 64K as a, a reading block and a writing block. And we also try the random IO uh, with uh, 4K. So in general, four, uh, four, uh, four different user, uh, user mode. So one thing we want to, uh, you know, in, instead of, uh, of just the throughput of the whole you know, cluster, the other thing we pay a lot of attention is we want to make sure the volume do uh, provide enough quality of service. So we define some actually quality service requirement we listed here. One thing, you know, for random, we think latency is uh, number one, right? Because we always want to lat the, all this I.O. return quickly. So we want to make sure that all the random I.O. have an average latency less than 20 milliseconds. So that's one uh, QoS requirement. The other thing is uh, one thing we, uh, actually we did uh, some tests on AWS. We try to understand uh, what kind of uh, Amazon Web Service EBS they can provide. So in general, we do, uh, we starting a uh, random starting several, uh, we do some random testing for seven days. And uh, during the seven days, we starting a lot of VM and uh, attach a, VLAN, a different volume from time to time. And uh, for each VM, we will run for uh, two hours and uh, collecting all this performance data. And uh, try to understand if, if the, for standard EBS volume, what kind of performance is gonna get. So in general, the things we get is, uh, you know, a, if you look at the uh, AWS thing, you can see that they, they say that the common EBS, they will provide something like 100 ELPs per second. Uh, they, they, they don't mention latency, right? And uh, they, they also don't mention the, uh, you know, the sequential bandwidth. So based on our testing, I think in general, their performance uh, is pretty, you know, qualified to their uh, SLA uh, claimant. So we set some goal here is uh, uh, we want to make sure that uh, you know, each VM can, uh, we hope each uh, volume can, uh, you know, provide 100 milliseconds, 100 ops per second with latency less than 20 milliseconds. So that's for random. On the other side, they want to make sure for each volume they can provide something like a more than 60, something like a 60, uh, 60 mic per second bandwidth. So that's our QS. How we do that? So currently, self actually, uh, you know, they, as I know, they, they don't have a very good, uh, you know, isolation uh, design. They, they, they can make sure, you know, if you have a by the user, have a lot of pressure. And uh, it depends on the, for example, if you use OpenStack, usually what we will do is we will use C group. We use C group to control, you know, each, each, each VM, how much IO and how much bandwidth he can consume. So, but here we don't use C group, we just use some functionality from FIO. FIO actually provide a, a feature. You can cite the mask bandwidth and the mask throughput the FIO will generate. So here you can see that when we're doing a random IO, we cite the, the 100, 100 ELPs per second as a, you know, a max throughput as a target, and a 60 mic per second as a target for sequential IO. And based on that, we want to make sure that if we have enough VM, right, uh, we will increase the VM gradually. When we have, we can expect, we can uh, predict that when we have enough, a lot of VM, actually the average uh, throughput per VM will go down. So we set a QS that we want to make sure that, you know, uh, 
for average for the VM performance actually it should be should larger than 90% of defined throughput. So that means for sequential sequential I/O is uh, uh, five, uh, 54 my, uh, my, uh, microsecond, and for ALPS is 90 ALPS per second. So that's two QS we define for this testing. Now it's the fun part. Uh, let's look at this is a random rate performance. So the X is actually the uh, VM number. It's also the volume number. So in general, we create one VM and uh, attach a different volume into a system. And uh, the, uh, the left side is, uh, is a per, per VM performance. That's uh, how much you know, uh, volume, how much uh, ELPS you get per VM. And the right side is uh, aggregation total performance. So uh, there are two to date, you know, uh, the, the market is the number we get is actually is, uh, 4,600. That's actually get is uh, at uh, 80 VM. And, uh, but, but remember we have two QS, uh, you know, requirement. We want to make sure the per VM performance is larger than 90% of the predefined, you know, target. So actually here, if we take that, uh, we can see that at, uh, when we scale to 30 VMs, the per VM VLPs, you know, Ops already dropped to 19.5. So that's a, that's a random rate data. Yeah, question? No, you still will go down, but uh, because we set a QS number, so we didn't do further testing. So we want to make, I will show you more data regarding to latency. You can tell why we pick the uh, 30 VM. That's the other reason, because in this picture, I did show that. Yeah, I know, but because I think that one of the reasons is that we want to make sure, I think if we want to offer some uh, EBS service to custom, we want to make sure that our cluster is not over commitment. So we want to make sure we meet uh, SLA, you know, we, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's the reason. How many spindles do you look This is 40. And the 40 is spindles, and uh, we use the replicator equals two. So I will do some summarize in the end to, you know, if they, where's the bottleneck for the side. So this is a random ride. Uh, so the, the, the curve is a little different compared to a read. Actually, you can see at the beginning the, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, maybe something, sorry, something wrong with this figure. I think the, yeah, this is a latency actually. Uh, so you can see that at the beginning, the problem is pretty good because the latency is very small. That's because actually most of the write hit the SSD cache. But, you know, because uh, if you count if you for XFS, if you use XFS, so first if you, all these things will be written to the cache, SSD cache, SSD journal, and uh, then the self will act to the client, so client just uh, marks the complete, uh, writing stuff. But when there's a small amount, you know, the, when the pressure goes up, so you can, one thing is that uh, you must also flush all the state from the, from the, on the, uh, on the field stop part, I mean on the real SD disk. So you can see that actually there's a big jump, uh, you know, when you uh, move from the 30 VM to the 40 VM. The latency jumps very quickly, and the, actually the, uh, the per VM performance also very jumps up very quickly. So we set the other goal is actually uh, based on our uh, QS. So we also pick up the uh, VM equals to 30 as uh, you know, uh, you know, the peak performance for the cluster. So this is a sequential rate. Uh, so we, we caps every you know, VM have the, uh, at the most the 60 uh, mic per second. Uh, performance. So you can see that when you increase the uh, uh, VM number, you can still get something go on. But similar, uh, you know, we see that we, because we have the predefined QS. So when we, what we can see is that the VM number equals to 40. Uh, you know, the performance is, uh, when, the, when the VM number is equals to, uh, goes to 50, the poor VM uh, throughput is dropped to less than, uh, less, it, it goes to 49. So that's already break our QS number. So we pick the you know VM then 40 as a as a you know peak performance. 
And this is all right. Uh, we didn't see uh, you know, the SSD journal uh, benefit in the sequential write. That's because I think it's will very quickly use all this space and uh, use all this uh, uh, general space in the, in the sequential write. Uh, so, but, so in general, in this case, you can see that because uh, if you understand the, you know, Seth, that for every read, actually Seth just do a write physical read that goes through the master, right? But for write, uh, if you use uh, replicated in equals two, actually there are uh, two real physical write, write happen. So in general, uh, if you count, Simple compare read and write. Write will uh, consume twice of uh, IO disk, IO, IO bandwidth, and ELPS compared to read. So in this case, even if uh, we didn't, uh, uh, we still are not meet. Uh, we will see the actually peak number happen at something like uh, 50 VM. After that, it just goes down. But if we take the you know our QoS number, so we will take the something like VM 20 as a peak number. This is an interesting thing uh, to look at uh, all this latency. Uh, so we, we have six line, and uh, uh, one thing we, we found is very interesting, actually, is the latency is really depend have a strong dependence on the QD size. Uh, QD is a parameter you can use uh, to adjust, you know, in the FIO, how many IO is on fly before it's commit. Uh, one thing we found, actually, we think there are still some bug or something we can do better on the client side. And uh, one thing we found is on the RDE client side, uh, sometimes uh, there's only one thread. So if you have a lot of, if you have a long, uh, very long QD, QD implementation, most of the I.O. is happen on the client side. So I just show you some picture to let you know what the latency looks like. So you can see there are several lines. Uh, I think the green line is... Uh, uh, it's, uh, let's look at the read first uh, for the random, and you can see that uh, the uh, the blue line is a uh, is a uh, uh, random write random read, and the uh, red one sorry is uh, I'm not sure you can tell which is right or which is blue. Yeah, this one is a uh, is a random read, and this one is a uh, random write. So you can see that the latency jump very quickly because also the SSG general impact. So in general, you can see that actually uh, the latency is okay uh, for, the, for, the, for all this random. Uh, the beginning latency is actually starting from something like 10, and it's gradually, when you're adding more pressure, uh, it's gradually increased. We do some you know, latency breakdown. We try to understand where the latency goes on. And for random write, I think for, the, for all this random uh, read, operation, the latency is pretty good. I, we, we observe that most of latency go to the disk. So we just measure the latency on the FIO side. So this latency is measured inside the VM from the FIO. On the other side, we measure the, we use IO state to measure the latency from the storage node. So usually, uh, Seth did a pretty good job. They, add, they will add too many seconds actual latency. So I think that's pretty good. But uh, the the not very good thing is uh, if you look at the sequential thing. Uh, so actually, the sequential uh, latency is uh, a, a little larger. Uh, uh, usually, when we do uh, you know sequential stuff on local disk, right? Because we can see something like uh, one millisecond or you know two millisecond latency at most, because there's almost no uh, you know the spindle seeking happen. But here, uh, you know, it's a uh, some different thing happen. So we try to understand why. Uh, so we do a lot of, we do some uh, IO bulk trees, try to understand the IO pattern. Uh, so in general, uh, what Seth did is, uh, uh, you know, Seth will try to distri dis distribute all this IO to, the, to different objects across the whole node, whole cluster. So in series, uh, uh, if you have a logical sequential uh, read or write happen on a virtual uh, disk, in the end, uh, in the physical node, actually all this uh, disk I/O will become the random one across all this stuff. So there are the two figures. First one uh, is uh, you know we're starting for 40 VM, all doing a sequential I/O. So you can tell that the red part is uh, you know all this I/O are one by the other. So that's a real physical sequential I/O. 
but the blue part is actually, even you know, all, all you do is a sequential I.O., there's still some, maybe 20% that goes to random. And if you mix uh, random and uh, sequential together, that's uh, a red figure, uh, totally 40 VM, and 20 for random, 20 for sequential, you can see that actually the blue part become larger. So that's the reason we believe that in some case, because there are so many you know, virtual streams, they will combine together, mix together, and hit in one physical disk. So that convert the, you know, the, the disk pattern become very random, so the, the disk needs to spin a lot. So that it makes uh, you know, all this latency increase a lot. So this one is uh, some interesting one. Uh, besides of the uh, SATA disk, we also try the full SSD. Uh, so in general, I think is uh, pretty good at uh, full SSD. So this result is actually we use uh, uh, full SSD as a single node uh, and uh, doing all this perform testing. You can see that uh, if we set uh, the latency QS as one millisecond, we can get something like a 55K ELPS. For, for, for one node. And if you can let the QoS a little less, so if you, you can get almost 80K with, uh, you know, two milliseconds. So that's pretty good, I think. Okay, so this is a, a fun part. Uh, so we try to understand, you know, uh, if the self cluster is uh, efficient or not. So we, we summarize, they have, they have four, four, four different lines. And the first uh, uh, column, this is uh, the, the mask is, uh, you know, uh, throughput we measured, but we didn't consider the QoS requirement. And this is the throughput if we consider QoS requirement. And this is, uh, you know, in series, uh, uh, the, if we just uh, think about the disk, how much bandwidth and ELPS the disk can provide. So we do some testing, we use uh, the disk model we use is uh, uh, Seagate, uh, ES, uh, Enterprise SATA. So in general, it can provide something like, uh, let's see here, it's uh, 90 uh, ELPS per second for each disk. And it also can provide something like, uh, you know, 160 uh, mic per second for sequential. So based on this state, we calculate the, you know, the disk throughput for the whole cluster. Remember, we have 40 disks. And we also consider for write, because we must have write twice. So we just, uh, you know, half of the max throughput. So that's the reason you can see that this is only half. And we also consider the network throughput, right? Because we, in, in current setup, we use four 10 GB network. For each node, we have one 10 GB. So in general, if the, uh, this is very in theory, you know. So, so in general, if they, uh, for, the, for the small I.O., you can do a lot. But for the big I.O., right, so something like, you know, we assume that we can get uh, at most uh, 4,000 bytes per second. So we pick up the small one of this, these two, as a, you know, as a final, you know, a system, uh, uh, you know, perfect uh, throughput, and calculate the efficiency. Uh, so I think uh, Ceph is very good on random, and I, I personally think it's pretty good. Uh, there's still something uh, maybe we can do more on the uh, sequential. Uh, I just talk with uh, Ink Tank people these days, and uh, we, we do some testing, and uh, we already can improve this performance something like 50%. Uh, they, uh, you know, thanks for CJ, he gave me some other uh, you know, hints. We hope we can work together to make this better in the future. And on the other side, let's compare the SATA and SSD. So in general, you can see that, you know, uh, for the SATA, actually, tra traditional uh, disk, you, you have a very big space, but the ELPS is pretty low. But if you use uh, something like the uh, just SSD, the space is not issue, but the performance is pretty good. So in general, we think we, maybe we can mix uh, the SSD and the SATA together. That's a better solution. So as summary for Seth, um, random is pretty good. Sequential, uh, we are still trying to work on that. And next step, uh, we will do continue to do is uh, country, we're just working on FIO. So we will try to do 
more, you know, uh, real workload, uh, starting from small one, for example, the C-Spanch, and uh, gradually move to some complex one, uh, some enterprise workload. The reason we do that is we try to understand what's the latency really impact the, you know, the, uh, the application performance. Uh, second thing is we, we try to understand if we can use SSD better. So in general, how we can balance the SSD between the SSD general and also we, cons we can consider your SSD as part as uh, you know the uh, you know date part uh, I mean a fail stop part cache. So how much of your efficiency drops were based on placement? Sorry. How much of the efficiency drops were based on placement? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. The efficiency you calculate against the total throughput of forty spindles. Yes. If I think the Seth did a good job. Yeah. His question is, uh, uh, I'm not sure I catch that, but I tried. <laughs> so his question is, uh, he think maybe uh, if we uh, replace state in a different way, right? It's non-balanced, that will affect, uh, impact the performance, right? I think the Seth did a pretty good job. So the, the crash algorithm will distribute all this stuff very good. But the one thing we, we do t this, these days is, uh, we do a special tuning. Uh, defaultly, actually, if you create a pool and uh, uh, you create a volume, right? For example, in this case, uh, we have one pool, and in, the, in this pool, actually, we have 40 disks. And if you create a volume in, inside this pool, you, all your data will distribute to all these kind of 40 disks. So sometimes that's not a very good design. There are two reasons. First one is uh, if you create a 40 volume in this same pool, so the possibility for all these kind of different uh, volume traffic will mix together. That will become, all this traffic will become more, you know, fragment and uh, random. The other thing is, uh, if you create, a, put all these kind of disk in one pool, and if you have one disk fill, actually it's, it will impact a lot of volume. So we, we do some tuning there. We kind of think that, you know, you can create more pool. It's, it's a little administrative work. For example, in this case, we have four, four node, four story node, right? So we just pick each disk from each pool, uh, each node, and create one pool. So we can create 10 pool. We can increase the sequential performance something like 10%. And also that will gradually reduce, uh, you know, disk failure impact for the whole cluster. But for your question, I think uh, it's pretty good. It's almost evenly distributed. Yes, that's okay. default. Okay, that's for Saif. Let's move to Swift. Yeah, I know somebody wants to see some Swift to Saif comparison. <laughs> yeah, Swift is, uh, uh, we actually have the other cluster. This, uh, you know, we, it's very common. You know, we, we have a 10 uh, starting node, uh, that's UP server and we have two proxy nodes. And uh, actually the proxy node is, uh, we have actually before that, before this proxy node we have the HA proxy to do all this low balance. And uh, uh, anything more? So for each star node actually we have the one processor and uh, we have 16 gig memory. And uh, uh, we have the uh, one uh, called port NIC. So recently, Swift have a very good design. You can bend in uh, several IP to one, you know, uh, you know, uh, starting node. So that's a pretty good design. So original, we actually we use IO bounding, but the bounding performance is uh, not very good. Kind of is better. And for each star node, we have 12, uh, you know, SATA disk. And one SSD, that's SSD used to hold uh, all this uh, container, all this stuff. So this is uh, the configuration. Uh, we use the uh, latest uh, Swift code, and uh, I, I will ignore most of the stuff here. So you can, I will upload the slides so you can check that later. So this is my storage. Uh, we use one workload, it's developer Intel. Uh, you, you know, it's, uh, we already open source that. 
We introduced Cosbench one year ago, also on, on OpenStack conference. And uh, currently Cosbench already supports uh, Swift, already supports Scythe, uh, and uh, we also support S3 interface. And we also support Amplidata. I'm not sure how many know Amplidata. So there are more and more people try to use that. If you if you're interested, you can go to that website. And we, we do two testing. Uh, you know, first one we call that a small scale testing. Second one is what we call it a large scale testing. For the small scale testing, it's pretty small. We only create 100 container, and each container has 100 object. So we just try to understand what's the best performance we can get. You know, if we have only very little data. For the you know for the large scale testing, actually we create something more. We treat, uh, we have two different uh, objects. One, first one is a small object, it's a 128K. The other is 10 meg. So we have different, uh, for, the, for the small object, actually we create a lot. That's 10,000 uh, multiples to 10,000. And for the large one, we don't have so much disk space. So we have to create one uh, 10,000 container, and each container have the uh, 100 object. The reason we create more container is uh, some people told me that if you have more container and maybe you will have more pressure to, the, to your container service. So that's the reason we create more container compared to object. Uh, so the run, we run, ramping up for uh, 300 second and the matter 300 second and we also define some QS because we think the latency is very important. So in general, we, the, 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 we want to make sure we get to the first bet, something like less than uh, 200 milliseconds. And uh, uh, so the QS, latency QS is equal to you know, the uh, 200 milliseconds plus the object size and divided by two mic. So in general, if you have a big object size, it takes a long time to transfer all this stuff, right? So that's uh, QS. So this is a, a small scale. Uh, it's pretty good, uh, right? The, all this throughput, all this latency is uh, perfect. And we can drive the CPU almost, uh, especially for small object, right? We can drive the, the bottleneck for the uh, small object testing is uh, CPU. So we almost use all this CPU. And for the larger object, actually, the bottleneck is the network because we only have you know, two 10 GB link. So the, that's the bottleneck. So let's look at what's happening when we increase the number. So, uh, so the big object actually is pretty good. It's almost the same because uh, uh, the network is bottleneck. We didn't change the network. But the small object uh, you know, uh, is a drop, a, drop a lot. And uh, we believe most of the, you know, uh, the issues come from the disk. I will show you more about this. Yeah, let's say that 80% and 58% uh, uh, performance degradation for the small object testing. So actually, this is, uh, uh, I think uh, a lot of our community guys already know this. Uh, we talked about this in last uh, design summit. And uh, so in general, we, look, we, we try to compare the you know, large scale and the small scale. You can see both, uh, uh, you know, actually the IO pattern change a lot. So you look at, uh, I show you something like, you know, the avail, uh, uh, latency await time, and on the other side is, uh, you know, the typical uh, uh, size per read and write. So that's changing a lot. And we also do the, use the bulk trees to capture what's happened. So in general, there's a lot of things happening. It's metadata. That's the fail system, uh, fail system overhead. There are so many inodes and all this metadata information, you, they cannot cache in the memory because the memory is not large enough. So in that case, the Swift must wait for all this kind of I know that uh, metadata information. So one thing you can do is uh, you can have a big memory. So this is a test we did, and uh, the blue one is a small test, and the uh, you know if we have enough memory, and the red one is actually uh, we do some preload thing, and the the, sorry, the green one is a, is a small scale. That's a perfect target. 
And the, the blue one is actually if we have enough memory. So you can see that uh, if you have enough physical memory with time goes on, you can cache the most of the inode and all this metadata information into the you know, memory. So the performance is very close. And uh, there's a BKM if you don't want to wait, because if you, you can do some preload, it's, uh, there's a command. You just cite you know, the VSS cache press equals to one and do some you know, LRS to make sure all, the, all your inode information can be cached. So that's the line for the write. So if you do the prefetch and preload, actually the performance is good enough. But this is not very good uh, because memory is expensive, right? So we try to figure out something else. Uh, so this is the second thing we try. Uh, so we just use SSD. We use SSD and the uh, 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 flash cache. Fla I'm not sure how many of you heard about flash cache. Flash cache is uh, Facebook stuff. You know he can, uh, you know, take the SSD as an actual cache. So we configure the flash cache to make sure the SSD only cache inode and the metadata information. So that can actually improve the problems a lot. Something like we can get something 50% to 100% perform improvement compared to if there's no SSD. But there's still a big gap, you know, compared to the perfect case. So I think maybe we can do something. Uh, one thing is, uh, so I, so in general, I think for Swift, a big object is okay, and uh, uh, small object uh, needs some tuning. The first one is uh, in the latest uh, XFS, you can use a small, you know, uh, I know the info, I know the size. Original, the default I know size is one K. Uh, Trunk Teal has suggested we can go to some small one, uh, something like uh, uh, two hundred and uh, uh, fifty-six. But that you can only use that in the latest XFS. In the old kernel, you cannot use that. We are trying to do some testing. It's still in working on progress. Second thing is uh, people talk with us, you can use a different file system, right? But uh, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's my custom done like that. So, so third thing is uh, there's also some discussion, I think, in the self community, people talking about how to handle a small object, right? This discussion, like, you know, let's use level DB. Let's use something different. We just uh, don't use the file system. And the uh, next one is uh, uh, like the haystack or you know or TFS. Actually, they just uh, adding extra layer. They uh, they combine the small object in a big one. And uh, so in that case, they can reduce the I/O uh, to the physical disk. So I think uh, Swift today actually have one patch uh, proposal, uh, one blueprint from Red Hat called LFS. I think maybe we can do some in that area to you know, group all these small, small objects into a big one and then reduce the disk pressure. And for ourselves, uh, we will continue to uh, do more testing to try to understand how to use SID because that's the most simple way. We just try right through and we will try right back uh, you know, and we will understand what's the latency go. And uh, we will also, we, some customers of us also have a concern that if you use the flash cache, right, and it, how, what will happen if the SID go? So we will do more testing there. That's the next step. Okay, that's all. So as a summary, uh, I personally am a big fan of the, uh, both Swift and Ceph, uh, you know. So I, I really like these two software, and uh, uh, Swift is very simple, and it's easy to use. Uh, Ceph is a uh, 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 ad hoc, ad -hoc uh, structure, and uh, uh, I think their performance is, o is good, uh, but still a lot of things to do. So we hope if you guys want to uh, work with together, we can work together to uh, you know, make this better. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>